Hello and welcome everyone to the Environment Primer series of Just AIS. My name is Pragya and in today's interesting episode of Environment Primer, we are going to discuss a very important convention. The title of our today's discussion is the Minamata Convention on Mercury. So, in this discussion, we will firstly study about what is the mercury pollution. Then we are also going to analyze the sources of this mercury pollution. Then we are also going to see what is the Minamata Convention. We are also going to analyze what has been achieved by this convention as of now. And lastly, we are going to analyze the practice question for your prelims examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, recently this sixth anniversary of this Minamata Convention has been observed and countries around the globe are talking about minimizing the mercury pollution. So, developed countries like USA etc. asked India also to reduce its dependence on the mercury tubes or the fluorescent tubes. So, India said that okay, we can try reducing it by 2030, but it is not possible to reduce by 2025 as has been urged by the developed countries. India also said that in, by 2025 we will analyze that whether is it actually possible to reduce the mercury pollution immediately. So, this is all happening and the countries are talking about phasing out of mercury pollution. So, this brings us to the moot question of our today's discussion that what exactly is this mercury pollution and why are the countries around the globe talking about reducing this mercury pollution. So, mercury is a naturally occurring element that is found in air, water and soil. But what happens is due to the mercury pollution or due to the excessive exposure to mercury, you face serious health issues such as neurological disorders, immune disorders, paralysis and in some cases even death and that is why the countries are so seriously talking about phasing out of mercury pollution. So, exposure to mercury even in small amounts may cause serious health problems and is a threat to the development of the child in the womb as well as the early life. Okay, So, not only the children but it also affects the adult people if they are overly exposed to it and not overly exposed to it but also if they are exposed to it in very small amounts. So, that is why it leads to the countries talking about reduction of the mercury pollution. Moving forward, what are the major applications of mercury? Let us see. So, the first application is in thermometers and barometers. So, mercury has a high coefficient and expansive thermal capacity and that is why it is used in the thermometers and barometers. This is the most common uses of mercury. Then in the chemical and mining processes such as chemical mining of uh, chloride and mining processes of gold, mercury plays a very important role. Then in the electronics and electrical switches, mercury has a very high conductivity rate and a very low resistance and that is why it is used in the electronic appliances as well as electrical switches. Now, let us analyze what are the sources of the mercury pollution. So, first source is the natural source. So, volcanic eruptions and then erosion of rocks and soil can release mercury into the water body. Okay, then there is artisanal and small scale gold mining also known as the ASGM. So, this ASGM is a major source of mercury pollution where mercury is used to extract gold from ore and this accounts for almost 37 percent of mercury pollution. Okay, so this is a serious source of mercury pollution. Then there are industrial processes as well such as various industries such as chlorine production, cement manufacturing and waste incineration emit mercury. The cement industry is responsible for around 11% of global anthropogenic mercury emissions and that is why this is very concerning for the countries around the globe and that is why they have sat together and talked about removing mercury from the atmosphere and the environment. Okay. Then in another important source of mercury pollution is the waste disposal. So, improper disposal of e-waste products containing mercury such as fluorescent bulbs and batteries leads to mercury leaching into the environment and that is why the countries are asking the developing countries to reduce their dependence on this fluorescent tubes and mercury bulbs. Okay. Now, this brings us to the another point of uh, 
another important point of our today's discussion that what is the Minamata Convention. So, it all began in the 1950s in a small fishing village of Japan. Small fishing village of Japan. A fishing village of Japan and the name of this fishing village is the Minamata. So, what happened in this uh, small fishing village of Japan that the industrial waste that released mercury okay, uh, polluted the bay area where, where fishing used to take place. So, many people got exposed to the high or higher amounts of mercury and they suffered neurological disorders, they suffered paralysis, they suffered various heart diseases and even death and this disease is known as the Minamata disease and that is why the convention draws its name from this tragic incidence of the Minamata uh, village of the Japan and that is why it is known as the Minamata convention. So, the Minamata convention on mercury is a global treaty to protect human health and the environment from the adverse effects of mercury and its compounds. So, basically it is talking about targeting mercury as at its very source itself. It was agreed at the fifth session of the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee in Geneva, Switzerland 2013. So, basically it was agreed at the COP5. Okay. Currently, 128 countries are signatory to this Minamata convention and 190 countries are parties to this convention. Controlling the anthropogenic releases of mercury throughout its life cycle is one of the key obligations under the convention and that is what I have explained to you that yes, it is talking about targeting mercury at its original source and if, if you will ask me that whom administers the convention, the convention is administered by the UNEP or the United Nation Environmental Program. Okay. So, the UNEP um, uh, administers the Minamata convention. Now, let us talk about the achievements of this convention till date. Okay. So, the convention has achieved several milestones from banning new mercury mines, extending the list of prohibited products and manufacturing processes that must not be imported or exported and establishing controls on emissions and releases. But there are certain challenges as well. For example, reducing the dependence of the developing countries. on mercury. For example, India also said now that it is not possible for us to reduce it immediately. We will try to reduce it by 2030 completely. So, yes, technological transfers and financial aids that are given to the developing countries, their huge dependency on mercury remains one of the top challenges that still has to be achieved by this Minamata convention. So, with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion. We have seen the mercury pollution. We have also examined that uh, sources of mercury pollution. We have also seen that why it is necessary to control mercury pollution. We have also seen the Minamata convention and its achievement till date and the challenges which still remain to be conquered. Now, let us analyze a practice question for your prelims examination. So, the question is consider the following pairs. Your first uh, pair is Basel convention. So, the question is consider the following pairs. One uh, Number 1 Basel convention and it talked about chemical and pesticide related international trade. Your uh, number 2 option is Rotterdam convention controlling the transboundary movement of hazardous waste. Your option 3 is Minamata convention developing globally legally binding instruments on mercury. And your option 4 is Rio de Janeiro convention protecting human health and the environment from persistent organic pollutants or the POP. How many of the pairs given above are correctly matched? Your options are A is 1 only, B is 2 only, C is 3 only and D is all 4 pairs are correctly matched. Kindly drop your answers in the comment box below. I hope this session was insightful for you. If you have any feedback regarding this session, kindly drop it in the comment box below. If you liked the today's discussion and found it to be helpful, kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Thank you.